everybody, it's Christina from Card Making Magic. This is the effect we're going to create uh, and it's using a little product called H2O's. So I'm going to show you how to make the backgrounds and how to watercolour in the flowers using this product. Now when you buy the H2O's they come in these little pots and the, the, the paint inside them is quite hard. Now all I do is take the lids off the pots and I glue them to a CD um, that's no longer in use. And once they're glued onto that they're quite safe, they won't fall out and then if you use the case when you're storing them you can just pop them all into your case, pop the lid on and there you have your storage with all your H2O's inside it. Now to use these paints you need to spritz them. As I said to you they come they're quite hard but you need to spritz them to wake the paints up. So you're just going to spritz over them a couple of times and then pop them on one side and allow the magic to work. The water will soften the paints so that you can then use them. Now this underneath is, is a, a white clean craft mat and all I'm going to do is use some glossy photo paper and just cut it into the size that you want and once the paints are soft you're going to mix the, the mica in because the, the mica settles so mix the mica in and then just put blobs of it onto your craft mat. Now I'm going to use the two shades of blue. So I've got those spotted around there. Clean the brush and then go into the paler blue. And again, mix the colours up, mix the mica in, and then just splot that down in between the other colours. Try not to get the darker shade onto your brush because you will, um, you will contaminate the two colours. So once you've done that, you're then going to take your spray and you're going to spritz the, the colours up. Now I think into that mix we'll add a little bit of the gold. So again, clean the brush, mix the gold, and you need to keep spritzing your, pa your paints um, as you go along to keep them soft. So we'll just add this little bit of golden. And again, just make sure it's all well spritzed. Now if you take your piece of glossy card and you're just going to lay it down onto the colours and then when you lift it up you have a mix of the colours in there so all we're going to do is just collect all the different colours now you can get quite a few sheets of card done with the colours that you've mixed but into this mix I'm also going to add some cosmic shimmer and I'm just going to put some little spots of it into the card and then once you've done that you'll need to pop it on one side and let it dry but there you can just see the mix in there and of course once it dries it dries very um, shimmery. Now I've created several little sheets of, of the paper just adding in different colours as I've gone along and I'm just going to pop those on one side to dry. So here I am one cup of coffee later and my sheets are dry. Don't worry if they buckle a little bit because you can always um, straighten them out and once they're glued onto a backing card they won't look any different. So now I need to decide which one I'm going to use to complete 
the rest of my card. Now of course depending on the mix that you use for your colours, these are some of the effects that you will get. So the next stage is to choose a pretty stamp that you're going to put on there. Now I've chosen this little floral design and I'm just going to ink the stamp up, I put it onto an acrylic block, I'm going to ink the stamp up with some Versamark and then I'm going to use some fine detail gold embossing powder. So just make sure that all your stamp is well covered with the Versamark. And then you're going to place it on your card and make sure that you press it down well to get the Versamark ink onto the paper. And then once you've done that, you're going to put a clean piece of copy of paper underneath and sprinkle that with some embossing powder. As I said, I'm using a fine detail gold one, but you can use any that blends in with your colour scheme. And then once you tip it off, you're left with the dull impression on your card. And that now needs to be heated up with the heat gun to melt the powder. So just tip your powder back into its little container, put the lid on it and you're now ready to melt your embossing powder. Okay, so now you've got the, the heated powder onto your card and that's now ready for the next bit. So with your Twinkling H2O's um, well spritzed, you're just going to put some of the, it's like toothpaste now, it goes quite, quite pliable. Just blob some onto your um, white tile and all you're going to do is just colour in the flowers and I've decided to use glue on mine and I'm just going to go over it. The, the embossing powder will resist the paint so don't worry that you're going over it but just get the first coat on into the flowers and of course you will use any colour that blends in with your colour scheme. And then if you leave that to dry for a little bit. Now I'm just going to go back in with another coat just to deepen the colour in the flowers. And if you notice I've gone ahead and I've done the green leaves. So once you've painted your image, don't forget to look at where the shadows would be in the flowers and create a little more depth in the centre of the flower. And then once you've done that, you can then just take some soft toilet roll and if you just buff over it, it will bring <clears throat> the shine back into your glossy card and it will just buff up your image and it doesn't matter what colour you go with because of the um, thickness in the paint even though your background is quite deep the paint can still be seen when you've painted your, your stamped image and then if you leave this on your palette to dry you can reconstitute that whenever you need it and then leave these to air dry and once they're dry just pop them back on your stand and put them away for the next time. So now we'll go ahead and make the card. 
So this is the image that I'm going to use. So I've um, creased and folded some navy blue card. I'm going to use gold mirror card because of the gold on the image. And I've de decided to stay with the navy blue for the backing papers. Now to layer these up, this is the, the, the glue that I like to use. It's a tin flare glue gel and it comes with the syringe and the key to wind the, the gel out, the glue out. You need to remove the yellow stopper and the syringe plunger from the syringe, put the glue in, put the stopper back in and if you're not going to use it, make sure you push the glue right down to the end and then pop your stopper on and that will keep in that syringe for about six weeks. In the tube, if you don't open the tube, it will keep for a good few years. Not that I ever keep it that long. But it's a very good glue to use. Now, you can use it as a flat glue. So you just spread it onto your paper and glue it in place. But if you want to add dimension to, uh, and it allows you to move it around a little bit as well, but if you want to add dimension to some card, then you just need to put thicker blobs on the back and don't press it down as hard, and that will give you some height to your gluing. So I've matted and layered all these pieces together and I've added some ribbon around the card. I'm now just going to put these onto the base layer. There we are. And I've also cut myself a template. I've added, um, sorry, a sentiment. I've added a little gold back into the back of it. And with the pin flare, I'm just going to make this thicker so that it stands up from the card and I'm going to add the sentiment there I'm not going to push it down quite as hard and there we have a very pretty card just need to add a bow and that can also be done with the pin flare I'm just going to add that to the bottom of the card and then you can add any gemstones that you wish to add or um, doesn't really need flowers because it's got flowers on it but I think that's a very pretty card and there's the pink one